Good morning. Today we are going to discuss on the topic evidence for biological evolution. So let's introduce our theme: Himachri, Ridoy, Rishab, Ishan, Joy, Mohan, Nasim, Pitam, and Pritam. So let's start with the topic on which we are going to mainly focus on. The topics are evidence for evolution from morphology and anatomy, evidence for evolution from embryology, evidence for evolution from biomolecules, evidence for evolution from paleontology. So let's answer the first question that would come to our mind immediately after we got to know what the topic is. What are the evidences for evolution? So the answer is evidences in support of evolution has come from a number of fields: morphology. and anatomy embryology biochemical genetics and paleontology out of this darwin documented evidences mostly from the fields of biogeography and paleontology so now we are going to start the explanation part first evidence for evolution from morphology and anatomy So what does the term morphology and anatomy refers to morphology refers to the external structure of an organism and anatomy refers to the internal structure and functional organization now let us see what are homologous structures homologous structures are those structures where different organisms have similarity in their anatomical structure but some different functions are known as homologous structures example the pattern of bones of four limbs in whales bats etc in the picture given below we can see that humans bat dog etc have similar anatomical structure but different homologous structure we can see that in different animals same structures developed along different direction due to adaptation to different needs this is called divergent evolution because origin wise common structures diverge towards different direction to perform different function according to the need of the organism analogous structures in different organism which are not similar anatomically though they perform similar functions are called as analogous organs in the picture the wings of butterfly and of birds perform the common functions of fly but the internal designs and components of these two type of wings are very different from one another the study of vestigial organs offers an evolutionary explanation of such rudimentary vestiges by stating that adaptations to new environment of the organism have made these structures redundant such structures are called vestigial organs for example muscle of the external ear and appendix are rudimentary and often non functional but these are common to many mammals for their functional they reduce telly bones and nictitating membrane of the eye the appendix of the cecum etc the organisms which possesses the character of two different group are called connected links for example euglena is a chlorophyll containing green protozoan that forms connecting link between the animals and plant egg like mammals example plata platypus bear hair and mammary glands but also possess some of the reptilian character such as lying of eggs presence of cloaca etc so from these many examples and related points we can get the evidence of evolution from morphology and anatomy it's about evidences for evolution from embryology so the first question that comes in our mind is what do we understand by the term evolution from embryology Embryology is the branch of biology that studies the prenatal development of gamete fertilization, development of embryos and fetuses. It also provides a number of evidences in support of evolution. And here are some points under this uh, evidences from embryology are similar early development of embryos. All animals embryo their development from a single cell zygote. forming first a solid ball of cell and here is a picture which depicts that the solid ball of cells is divided into three parts morula blastula and gastrula and the next point is similar vertebrate embryos vertebrate embryos resemble one another in early stages in terms of various characters where it is quite difficult to understand uh, differentiate between embryo fish embryo from early mammalian embryo 
embryos of closely related animals resemble more and more for longer duration as compared to embryos of distantly related animals and here is a picture in the side that shows as you can say closely related to each other the next point is development of vertebrate organ here is a picture which depicts that development of heart from two chamber to three chamber and three chamber to four chamber and here are some organs that development stage of various vertebrate organs like heart brain kidney and ear are similar indicating a common ancestry of vertebrates so what is retrogressive metamorphosis certain animals undergo retrogressive metamorphosis so that the adults do not show true characteristics of the group to which they belong like saculina and harmanis so on the right hand side there's a figure which depicts the metamorphosis in harmanis okay moving on to the next topic which is temporary non functional embryonic structure so embryo often passes some non functional structure which later disappear according to the needs of the species survival those structures like gill clefts and tooth buds etc okay on the right side there's a diagram which depicts the gill clefts and slit or slits so ernest huckel a german zoologist proposed that the pharyngeal grooves between the pharyngeal arches in the neck of the human embryo as we can see from the right hand side picture is not only roughly resemble gill slits of fish but directly represents an adult fish like developmental stage uh, signifying a fish like ancestor so moving on to the next topic which is human embryo on the right side there's a diagram which shows the development of human embryo so what does the study says so the study says that human embryo clearly indicates human ancestry because of the similarities found in the early stage which matches with their vertebrates and it clearly depicts the evolutionary relationship with other vertebrates As we all know von Beer the father of modern embryology he discovered primary germ layer and found that different germ layer produce same type of structure in different animals according to von Beer's law animals resemble one another more and more the further we pursue them during their development Haeckel's biogenetic law Ernst Haeckel found similarities between embryogenic development of an individual and evolution of the race He formulated biogenetic law which is also popularly known as recapitulation theory it states that during development each individual repeats the evolutionary stages of its ancestor that is ontogeny repeats or recapitulation phylogeny so evolution can be traced from the above evidences bio means something which gives a sense of life and where molecules are related with life so the term biomolecules these are present in living organism and essential for biological process in organism such as cell division digestion uh, transpiration photosynthesis and many more when we talk about evolutionary evidence on the ground of biomolecules it mainly get divided into two types based on physiology and biochemistry if we talk about metabolic process it is the sum of chemical reaction that take place in the living cells providing energy for life processes and synthesis of cellular material uh, it can be divided into catabolism and anabolism respiration nerve conduction digestion of food their raw material chemical reactions product and mode of actions are basically similar in so different organism present in our art in different type of organism similar type structural and functional biomolecules are found and hence it became the important evidence for evolution in organism metabolic process atp enzyme photosynthesis pigment nitrogenous waste blood and lymph blood groups oxyhemoglobin crystal all these are biomolecules and each subtopics that means the blood lymph photosynthetic pigments enzyme all these are related to different organisms and they are basically found in each and every organism and they form the evolutionary evidence related to biomolecules as they are having quite relationship among all the organisms atp it is a biochemical which functions as energy currency in living cells enzymes 
Enzymes are the biocatalysts which mediate various biochemical reactions of living systems. For example, enzymes of Krebs cycle remain same in both the plants and animals. Molecular homology. Molecular homology it is a degree of similarity in the subunits of important molecules in organisms of different groups. For example, base sequence in nucleic acids. amino acid sequence in proteins etc uh, and in actin and tubulin proteins are same in all the animals indicating a common ancestry photosynthetic pigments chlorophyll a is universal to all oxygenic photosynthetic organisms so it's similar in both type and have bio molecular evolutionary relationship nitrogenous waste Ammonia and its different related waste are excreted out of the animal body to make them detoxified, and it's common thing present and released in all the vertebrates, which draws a relation among them. Blood and lymph, the two fluids connective tissues, have nearly the same composition and function in all vertebrates. And in uh, blood group, we can say that by checking the blood group composition, we can relate. Uh, any animal evolutionary traces or related ancestor oxyhemoglobin crystal structure of this crystal is similar to closely related animals so this is also a biomolecular evidence for evolution so finally we can say that from the above mentioned points we can easily prove that evidences of evolution from biomolecules now Another topic is evidences from paleobiology. This is a topic which made scientists to think about other ways of evolutionary traces. Paleobiology or paleontology is the study of past life based on fossils and fossil impressions. It has two major branches: paleozoology and paleobotany. as the father of paleobiology was leonardo da vinci but the modern father of paleobiology is george cuvier now let's see what are the types of rocks where we can get fossils there are three basic types of rocks those are igneous sedimentary and metamorphic in which fossils are mainly found age of rocks and fossils in 19th century a um, mechanism of accurate dating of rocks and their contained fossils was not available relative dating of the rocks was carried out by estimating of their position and rate of erosion in a particular environment but now in the modern era there are some steps which made rock or fossil dating easier those are uranium lead method potassium argon method electron spin resonance or the last one is most common carbon dating then geological time scale first geological time scale was proposed by italian scientist giovanni arduino it is correlation between time periods of the past and the fossiliferous rocks geological time scale has two major divisions known as eons cryptozoic and paleozoic and has six eras fossils provide the best evidences in support of evolution there is a progressive evolution from earlier forms to later forms various evidences from paleontology which support organic evolution are as follows early fossils fossils of earliest life are scanty fossils of 3100 million years ago consisted only of prokaryotic organisms they included bacteria and blue green algae later on eukaryotes developed they form algae of various types protozoans fungi and early invertebrates like sponges cnidarians annelids arthropods mollusks etc higher forms like tracheophytes and vertebrates were absent point number 2 disparity between fossils The differences uh, found in fossils of different periods are due to changes in form, structure, and habits of organism due to evolution or formation of modified organisms. 
point number three extinct organisms the extinction of species is closely tied to the process of natural selection and is thus a major component of progressive evolution in some passages of the origin darwin seems to have seen extinction as part of natural selection in others as an inevitable outcome point number four they include the mighty dinosaurs the toothed bark like archaeopteryx tree like lycopods great mammals ancestors of man etc so our next point is missing links transitional or intermediate forms between two groups of organisms which occur only in the fossil state are called missing links example ichthyostrega archaeopteryx etc archaeopteryx as we can see in this picture had the size of crow a long feather tail moderate size feather wings having three free clawed fingers with opposable hallux and elongated beak with teeth on both the jaws archaeopteryx had both reptilian and avian characters it lived around 150 million years ago ichthyostrega and its relatives represent forms slightly more advanced than the aquatic eusteropterans and appear to be near the evolutionary line leading to the first tetrapod on land our next part is fossil history of some individual organisms fossil histories of some plants and animals have been studied by paleontologists the best among them is fossil history of horse followed by camel and elephants today we are going to check some of the evolutionary changes that occurred in eohippus to form the modern day horse from its fossil history the changes are change in size and height lengthening of neck and head elongation of radius and tibia lengthening of functional metapodial thickening and growth of third digit development of jaw muscles continual growth of teeth change from browsing to grazing habit change from pad footed to spring footed small brain to large brain especially cerebral hemispheres strengthening and straightening of back at last let's check one small video regarding evolution of horses evolutionary history of horses eohippus height is 30 cm appearance is like a fox short head and neck four feet is having four toe one splint of first toe in feet is having three toe two splint of first and fifth toe mesohippus height is 60 cm appearance is like a modern sheep four feet is having three toe one splint of fifth toe in feet is having three toe middle one is longer than others mesohippus height is 100 cm appearance is like a small pony longer neck four feet is having three toe no splint middle toe is longer in feet is also same as like the four feet pliohippus height is 120 cm appearance is like a modern pony four feet is having one toe two splint hidden under the skin in feet is also same as like the four feet ipis height is 150 cm appearance is like a modern horse long head and neck four feet is having one toe two splint in feet is also same as like the four feet with this we'd like to complete our explanation thank you all and have a wonderful day ahead